leaders are focusing on the future, but remain focused as well on the present. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. Here are our headlines on this Friday. County Supervisor Greg Cox and San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced the launch of the San Diego Economic Recovery Advisory Group. It will work to lay out the steps on our road to recovery and the reopening of the economy. 71 new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the county were reported, bringing the total to 2,158 and seven more deaths, bringing the total to 70. The organizers behind the nation's biggest annual pop culture celebration announced today with deep regret there will be no Comic-Con this year. News 8's Alicia Summers has the story. This cancellation is a first in the convention's 50 year history here in San Diego. I spoke with a Comic Con representative who says at this point, health and safety is more important. It really is a health and safety issue. I mean, when, when we, we delayed announcing this because we were hoping that there might be a way of, of even having maybe a pared down show or a smaller show, but you know, monitoring uh, all the health advisors and all that, it just didn't make sense. <laughs> Comic-Con, one of San Diego's largest events and the largest comic fan convention in North America has been canceled in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's a sad day for us, but um, it's, uh, it's the best decision. The event pulls in upwards of 130,000 people each year and was scheduled to happen on July 23rd through the 26th. Many exhibitors and stakeholders rely on this event for a major portion of their livelihood. The cancellation will no doubt carry a huge economic shockwave throughout San Diego's economy as well. And my understanding is, you know, it generates over $100 million. I, I, I imagine that's going to be a, a huge negative impact. Anyone who purchased badges will be receiving an email in the next week, which will have directions on how to request a refund or transfer their badges. In the next few days, On Peak, Comic-Con's official hotel affiliate, will be canceling all hotel reservations and refunding all deposits made through them. Organizers say extraordinary times require extraordinary measures. Hopefully this will all be a, a very bad memory and we'll be uh, ready to make new fun memories in 2021. Here's some light at the end of the tunnel. Comic-Con is planning on returning here to the convention center next year, 2021, from July 22nd through the 25th. Back to you. All right, thanks, Alicia. Local leaders are taking steps now to ensure the region can bounce back from the economic crisis caused by the coronavirus pandemic. County and city leaders have teamed up to create the San Diego Economic Recovery Advisory Group. It will be a binational group made up of regional business leaders tasked with developing strategies for how businesses can reopen safely while still adhering to public health orders. This group will do the groundwork so that we as a region can start thinking about how we can safely and smartly reopen. This group will not be focused on the when, this group will be focused on the how. The group will meet regularly starting next Monday. UC San Diego Health launched a coronavirus blood testing this week to identify past exposure. These new tests look for antibodies produced in response to the infection, and the test is by doctor referral only. News 8's Heather Hope shows us how it works. Yes, we're getting an insight look at the UC San Diego Center for Advanced Laboratory Medicine. This is not a walk-up testing site. Here at their laboratory is where a team of trained scientists are able to take those blood samples and then analyze them to see if they test positive or negative for coronavirus. For the antibodies test, here Dr. Melissa Hoffman is ready to test a patient's blood serum. We're measuring SARS-CoV-2, IgG, and IgM antibodies. By testing this tray with the sample securely inside the diazine machine. And this is only the beginning. Now we're going to pro program the sample and begin testing. Running the test components inside this computer for further analysis. This one has a scheduled status showing the patients and reagents. All this is being done inside a clinical lab at UC San Diego's Center for Advanced Laboratory Medicine. The UCSD is one of the first hospitals to have this test, but other, other hospital labs are, are not far behind us. Dr. Rob Fitzgerald says these tests require a blood draw, which you can get done with your physician or from a phlebotomist. Well, it's, a, it's a serology test, and an important difference between this test and what we've been using to diagnose disease 
is that this test tells you you were exposed in the past. Dr. Fitzgerald says the lab takes in about 40 samples each day, only operating five days a week. This Diazyme DZ Light 300 Plus moves swiftly like a Singer sewing machine, but this one picks up the blood sample, adds a chemical to it, and then continues the test from there. This chart shows IgG, or immunoglobulin, a type of antibody. And that's one of the, your body's responses to the virus is it makes antibodies that binds to the virus. Fitzgerald says these antibodies are low in the beginning, and then within four to five days, the immunoglobulins become elevated. He says if you're concerned about an active infection, call your doctor for a swab test. That's a PCR, or polymerase chain reaction, which we see through drive-through testing. And we really don't want people who are acutely ill coming into the phlebotomy stations. This antibodies test requires a physician referral. As for the future... Many people think that the virus will recur um, after this initial pandemic. Testing here has been going on since Tuesday, new at 630, how this type of test could be crucial for first responders. I'll send it back to you. Thank you, Heather. A number of so-called freedom rallies are popping up across the country. This group of more than 100 protesters defied stay-at-home orders in Huntington Beach this afternoon. They're calling for an end to restrictions on public gatherings and businesses that have been put in place by local and state officials. On Facebook, there's a similar event scheduled here tomorrow, downtown outside the Hall of Justice. SDPD told us they're aware of the rally and will be working with the Sheriff's Department to ensure everyone follows local health orders. Well, two months ago, while delivering his State of the State address, Governor Gavin Newsom talked about how California was enjoying its 119th consecutive month of job growth. Today, he announced that since March 12th, 3.1 million Californians have filed for unemployment insurance. Today, I stand in front of you, sobered uh, by the reality of the last few weeks. Uh, we are now in a pandemic-induced recession here in the state of California. And while the new numbers came out today, 5.3% uh, unemployment, that masks the reality of where the real unemployment rate is here today and ultimately will end up over the course of weeks and months. Again, 3.1%. The governor said that he confidently believes that these are not permanent numbers and that the state's economy will thrive again within the next few years. The San Diego Food Bank hosted its fourth emergency drive through food distribution event this morning in East County. 40,000 pounds of food and paper supplies were handed out by organizers and volunteers. News 8's Chris Grow has more from La Mesa. And this was an efficient operation. About two hours it took for about 960 vehicles to roll through here at the Grossmont Center in La Mesa. And then the remaining food was handed out to some of these volunteers who, despite being out of work, decided to come out here to volunteer very early in the morning. Now, as for those that stayed in their vehicles for this drive through, they arrived here as early as 5.30 a.m. to make sure they were one of the few to actually get some of these food bags. Then it took hours for the volunteers to pack up the food and make sure that the operation was ready to roll at 9 a.m. Now, the families were able to collect items in the bags like a gallon of milk, a number of canned goods, fruits, nuts, paper towels, toilet paper, and baby wipes. Those re receiving the food stayed in their cars as the items went directly into their trunks to make sure social distancing was followed. Families were chosen on a first come first serve basis and these types of food drives are really only meant for seniors and those experiencing financial hardships, but also to help take some of the pressure off the food bank distribution centers, which were having long lines during COVID-19. This is what CEO Jim Floros had to say about the future of events like these. We decided we would do four mass distributions to try to shorten some of the lines. And then the, I think the next phase will be we'll be pushing a lot more product out to our already proven distribution model, which is 200 distribution sites, a network of 500 nonprofits with feeding programs and really just get more food out in more of a grassroots approach. And then we'll assess because as we all know, this thing changes like every 24 hours. Another good note about those volunteers today is that they made up a majority of the workforce that was out here today. Back to you. A federal judge has ordered a Carmel Valley doctor accused of hawking a coronavirus miracle cure to stop advertising immediately. Dr. Jennings Ryan Staley, who owns Skinny Beach Med Spa, appeared in court today after being charged with mail fraud yesterday in an FBI sting. 
Staley allegedly advertised $4,000 treatment packs that would provide six weeks of immunity from the virus. No plea was entered today, but bond was set at $45,000. Staley is due back in court May 19th. Video posted on social media last night shows a surfer in La Jolla being cheered on by onlookers as he flees the water from lifeguards. The Pacific Beach Instagram page shows the surfer getting out of the water, ditching his board and making a run for it. This was reportedly at Wind and Sea Beach around 7 o'clock last night. San Diego police say they have no record of anyone getting sighted there at that time.